Alrighty guys, we are back again and we're going to take a look at this great book by Dick Giordano. Draw Comics with, with uh, Dick Giordano. And it's pretty much comic book style. Um, so we're going to actually look at it. And like I promised before, this time I'm going to take my time with this book. And uh, it's very comic book style, especially the heads. Uh, the faces and also the body techniques very much this is the artist himself so let's read a little bit about him I think he yeah he died already because this used to be um, Romero's good friend Romero actually knew him um, he's done stuff for DC Comics Marvel Dell American um, he also worked with um, fellow comic legends as Neil Adams and John Byron and George Perez. Um, you know what I would love to see? I would love to see a book by George Perez, like a how-to draw by George Perez. That should be really cool. He did stuff for like um, Dark Knight Returns um, and um, Dark Knight of the Round Table, The, the Law for DC so basically he worked for like several companies like uh, not only DC and Marvel he did you know other companies so yeah that's him right here and uh, like always every book has you know content introduction and like every other book that I've shown you, pretty much what you need to use. Erasers, pens, T-squares, triangles, compass, templates, inks, correction fluid, pens, brushes. And of course, there's all types of brushes <coughs> Excuse me, that you can use. And the uh, Bristol board paper. And these are pretty much of all his drawings, especially on faces. Really cool stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to study his method, and then maybe we'll do some of these faces here. And then we have here pretty much how he does the eyes. And, of course, everybody works different. There's, um, you know, it's like two shapes here. One here, one here, one here. And it tells you step by step how to do the eyes. And you could use actually the ball shape too to do the eyes. Here's another great demonstration, the eyeball technique. And then the mouth. The mouth tells you pretty much what I've shown you guys, that when you're drawing a three-quarter view lip, it sort of like slides, kind of like, not slides, tapers in the mouth. So it's tapered in also on the front view, on the uh, profile, sorry. And this tapered on a side view. And here we have the nose segments, how to draw the nose. And uh, then we got the ears right here, different shapes of ears. Looking up, a three quarter view front, a back, and a front view ear. And these are different segments of the nose, A, C, and B. <clears throat> so it's pretty much like what you see on these drawings right here. So basically what you see here, you're seeing it up here also. A, B, C, and D. Except that you're not seeing D because D, you're looking down at the nose. You're only seeing it up here, but... And then we have the hair, how to do the hair. And of course, every artist, um, they do the hair really different. And like I mentioned before, when you're doing hair, that always the bottom part of the hair is a little bit more darker and more cast shadow. So always keep that in mind. And you don't want to exaggerate too many lines on the hair. Just give it a nice direction and rhythm. That's very important, especially when you're doing hair. 
And we got the front view over here by using a circle and a jaw shape. And then you add the vertical line and a horizontal line. And then you start adding the features. Here's the uh, profile. And my favorite of them all, the three-quarter view. How to do a three-quarter view. Notice that it's almost like the Loomis method, except that the segments are made differently. Because over here, he starts the ball shape, the jaw, and then he adds the uh, grid lines. Then he starts adding the features, and then he starts refining the whole drawing. So it's mostly like a three-quarter view. Here's a three-quarter view, rear view, step-by-step, -step, circle, the shape, the grid lines for the features. And then we got bird's eye view when you're looking down. Well, actually, when the face is looking down. And then we have the worm's eye view when you're looking up the face. And sometimes I have trouble doing faces like this, but we're going to do all this today. Trust me. Then we have expressions and emotions right here. How to do emotions. Character design, pretty much what I've been showing you guys, how to do character design, creating your own characters. And here's another one right here. The male heroes, the male villains. The female villains. And then we have the thugs, the bad guys, the villains. Notice, if you look at this, it's sort of like uh, David Finch would do his planes of the face. And here we have young people, how to draw kids, children, from ages 1 to 2, 3, 5, ages 6, 8, ages 12, 15, ages 16 and 18. How to draw Asian people. And this kind of looks like the, the Loomis method. How to draw the uh, Loomis face. So yeah, we're going to, uh, excuse me, we're going to do a little bit of everything. We're going to try to figure all this out, which is pretty easy. I don't think it's hard. Um... Here's an older man, how to draw an older man. And then drawing the figure. The proportions of the figure. The proportions for adults, proportions for children. <coughs> and construction, constructing the figures. And then we have more stuff over here. Loosely sketch the figure other approaches so he's giving you different ideas how to form the figure so we're gonna do pretty much all this today see if we can understand this a little bit which I have an idea how it is and here we have the hands and the feet The art of action, how to do action, walking, running, jumping, flying, falling, fighting, punching, kicking. And this is a great idea, great tip that he got, actually tells, he actually writes it down. A friend of mine in the business visiting my studio introduced me to this simplified method of figure construction. It's extremely helpful for planning active movements. 
So I'm going to show you how you do this one. Various males, various females, foreshortening, how to do foreshortening. And when you're doing drawing through, I'm also going to give you an idea, a tip how to draw a hand, especially when you're doing dynamic hands, which might help you guys out. It has nothing to do with the book, but it's something that I just remembered right now, now that I saw the hand. So I'm going to share that with you also. Cost costumes, how to draw costumes on, on your characters. More costumes. And yeah, you got to be creative when you're creating... I mean, so far, I mean, way, way back when I was younger, I used to come out with some really cool costumes. I don't know what happened to me now. Um, I, I, I'm sticking more with faces and heads. And, and of course, I do my own type of faces and heads, you know, on character design. But I need to practice um, to do uniforms and costumes, you know, especially when you're doing, <clears throat> you know, the head part. You have to make it look like that it's actually going to be, it's going to fit in, you know what I mean? If you're going to draw a strange face, you want to make a strange costume also. So yeah, this is another way how to draw the action by using the balance line. I don't know if you can see the balance line right here, but it shows you right there. So yeah, we're going to do a little bit of everything, people. Um... Thugs again, sexy women, how to draw sexy women, and we have kids, figure types of kids, uh, mutated characters, when the uh, character is turning, I think this is uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, I think, yeah, here's the Wolfman. And of course, the Wolfman, everything has to do with the moon, I guess, when he's near the moon. How many of you people have seen uh, American Werewolf in London? That was pretty awesome. An American Werewolf in London, I think it was called. You know, that's the only movie I don't have when it comes to horror movies. Uh, maybe I should get it. I don't know. It, it's, one of one, it's one of those weird movies, though. You got to admit, it's a very weird movie. <clears throat> How to Draw Older Women. Older men. And here we have surroundings. And surroundings are very important to draw. You need to learn how to draw surroundings. And that's one thing I definitely need a lot of practice in. Drawing. You know, I could draw figures and heads and faces and all that. But <clears throat> one thing that I definitely need to practice. And I used to do it way, way, way back. But I just kind of like lost it, you know. Uh, I used to do, you know, houses, background and even though it wasn't three-dimensional, but it was better than nothing. Um, but now everything has to do with perspective and 3D. You have to make everything look uh, 3D, especially when you're drawing background. And here's a great example of uh, perspective right here. Types of perspective. In order to do a comic strip, this is what you need. A board, a table, a T-square, a triangle, and a ruler. And then you tape the paper on the board. And that's how you do the borders, by using the T-square and the triangle. And we have the types of perspective here, different types of perspective. Three-dimensional perspective. Terms to know, picture plane, horizontal line, the vanishing point, the center of the vision line. Two-point perspective, that's another thing too that you have to remember. The eye level of the perspective. That's also important. Notice that they're giving you a demonstration how the perspective works, especially when you're looking at the perspective like this guy over here is doing. Also drawing a one point and two point perspective right here, see? So this would be like the panel of the comic strip, and this will be the outlines of how you start out the perspective. Of course, you're going to actually slice a picture. 
sort of like the panel one point objects uh, one point room and two point objects and two point room so I think that's what they mean by this I never understood this page that much maybe I should read it more often half of the you know half of the book I understand but some of the stuff here I don't understand here we have drawing three point perspective and here we have adjusting eye level when you're adjusting the eye level that's also important and it has to do with perspective also. You can see the people over here. And I think this looks way better than this over here, see? It gives it a better, I don't know. There's something happening here, more than what's happening over here. And drawing settings. And I don't know if you guys remember, I was showing you the successful book by Andrew Loomis, that when you're drawing stuff like this, you got to plan it out. A floor plan. Like if you were looking down on a floor plan, you're adding the table, the chair, whatever. Then after that, you're starting to realize that you got to do something more creative. You got to do something more three-dimensional. And then you do it. First, you work the, four, the, the floor plan. And then after that, you create something like this. You see? So I don't know if it mentions it over here. But I know Andrew Loomis actually explains this very, very well when it comes to drawing settings and background and all that stuff here you have the woman the woman's bedroom uh, here we have placing the people and here we have crowded room when you're drawing a lot of people in a crowded room and front of the beach and you can see the perspective over here notice that everything lines up well proportion and perspective at the same time <clears throat> and drawing guns and then when you draw guns you definitely need to know to learn that everything has to do with cylinder shapes block shapes rectangle shapes curve shapes circles yeah especially when you're drawing a gun like this perspective here we have a, a regular three-quarter view gun, and you can see it's 3D. This is also 3D in a way. Kind of looks flat, but it's kind of like 3D. And when you're adding blacks and, you know, black lines and thick lines, you're going to make it look more like three-dimensional. Of course, the butt of the gun looks three-dimensional. Here we have the swords. Gun types. All kinds of weapons. Gun, yeah, gun handling when a character holding a gun. And trust me, I have trouble drawing this. Sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but like I said, I'm a beginner like everybody else. So I have trouble drawing which I know I can do it, but I need reference to do something like that. Like, for example, I can copy this and draw it. I wouldn't have any problem with it. But drawing it from my head, you know, a character actually holding a gun, that's kind of hard to do. Especially, that's why you definitely need to use reference. Uh, you could actually get a toy gun and have a person pose for you, uh, you know, and take those pictures and hold it. You know, save those pictures until like maybe one day you want to draw a character holding a gun facing at you or something. So, yeah, these these things are very important. So start off by, I would say, you know, have your friend or girlfriend or whatever, husband or wife, whatever, uh, hold a toy gun pointing at you. And, uh, well, don't get them used to it. You know what I mean? I'm just playing around. But anyway, um, just like, you know, copy them. And then, or take pictures of those, of, of them holding a gun or a weapon or something. And then you could use that in the future. You could hold the pictures, save the pictures. And uh, another thing I've learned too, which I wish I would, I, I had a, like maybe if I had a file cabinet, maybe that would help. Like I would take real life pictures. Um, I used to have a camera a long time ago, um, way, way back, but... I'm not into photography anymore like I used to be. But anyway, 
I would do that. I would actually take pictures of everything I need, buildings, whatever, cars, whatever, and just put it in a file cabinet and just keep it for, you know, future reference whenever I need to draw anything, okay? So this is a more, more like explosion and gunfire techniques, you know, effects, creative tools that you can use, sponges, fingers, especially when you're using ink. You know, you can actually do these, you know, fingerprint techniques, whatever. Uh, here we have cars. And you can see he started off with a block shape, cylinder shapes. Then he started forming the car. Now, there's so many ways of drawing cars. Some people start with a base. Then they start building it up. And that's how they draw cars. Some people would just use a block shape. Or they'll just simply scribble in the car, because I've seen a lot of people draw cars, you know, they actually scribble in the form of the car. So here we have uh, trucks, how to do the trucks. Um, form and block shape and cylinders at the same time. So here we have the art of inking. Um, that's something important, doing inking. And what I like about um, Giordano, that Giordano, he does some really cool inking. Look at that. Including in the demonstrations, he gives you an idea how to do the inking. And just like I've shown you with the pen brush, which, which I have over here, which I'm going to give you a quick demonstration. Um, <clears throat> Actually, we'll use this. You know... This is sort of like a brush pen. And if you guys like working with brush, get yourself a brush pen because they work really good. You know what I mean? And then uh, if you want to do thick lines, first we'll start out with very, you know, like thin lines. See? Thin lines. If I want to make it thicker, then I, I press down, give pressure to the pen then I make it more thicker by pressing down on the pen, see? Pressing down, presión en la pluma, see, like that. And then I thin. If you wanna make it really thin, make it really thin like this. But I really recommend that you work with a brush pen and a micro pen, uh, especially when you're doing the features. For example, if you were to do this character with the ink, of course, you know, you're going to have to do it very slowly. And uh, even though I love inking, but it takes a long time to work with ink. Uh, and then, you know, but I promise in the future, I will do some tutorials on doing the ink how you work with ink because ink you know inking is very important and i still got to show you that book by steve rude that'll be the second time i'll show you that book because i have a video that i did on that book inking by steve rude and a lot of artists has actually contributed to that book and then remember the you know when you're doing the bottom part you got to make it more thicker so you actually press down on the pen so look at the watch how i do see i'm pressing then lightly is like this thin press thicker and you just practice that's it you can just keep practicing with the pen that's it little by little you'll get this um, this is, um, actually it's called, uh, a pen, pentrol made in Japan. I think it's called pentrol, which I have another, uh, a new one, but I got to look for it. And it has like a strange, uh, Japanese logo on the pen. I'm pretty sure you guys are very, very familiar, you know, uh, familiar with this type of pen and it's got like a nice pen holder here you actually put it on your shirt or something so yeah it works you know what i mean so right here <clears throat> he's giving you the idea of how to handle the pen especially a brush pen and work it notice here's the light source here you're going to make this part more thinner 
and then the bottom part you're going to make it more thicker you see so that's what you know what i was just showing you right now especially when you're drawing underneath the face the jaw you got to make it a little bit more thicker especially in the arm right here you can see a lot of thick lines here and then on the top of the arm is a little more thinner so this is what gives your your drawing more three-dimensional um 3d effect when you're doing these ink techniques and then you can see the back of the shirt is a little bit thicker and if say the the light source is coming from this side then the bottom of the shirt over here is a little more darker see that's the same thing with the face the light source and then here's the dark areas right here see right here is more thinner and then if say the light source is coming on this side of the face this side of the face is more thinner and then this side of the face of the head where the jaw the ear is more darker so yeah um that's what i like about this book it, it gives you an idea of inking pen work tools and these are all different pens that you can use uh, the micro pen the roll train pen uh this 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 type of pen is also is pretty good um here we have pen work tips how to work drawing drawing a bead i don't know what they mean by that this technique is easier to do than explain with a dip pen reach for me during the over at the ink okay they're talking about the point of the pen but i got to read this a little bit more in order to figure this out so yeah pretty much like i was showing you with the ink you you know practice with the ink you're going like that with the ink little by little you started you know start working with lines with the ink and this is more like cross hatching right here and this is more like thicker ink towards you and away from you this one is like away from you and this is like more like towards you and cross hatching right here <clears throat> so this is this is a very great book and then right here um it tells you the micro pen how this is a number one pen number three pen number five pen the one i like to use five pen and the seven pen which is more thicker uh, so these are pens that are really important and uh speaking of the number seven pen that's the pen that i definitely need to do more thicker lines here we have thick and thin strokes right here see The outside of the head is more thicker. Most cartoonists actually work this way. They draw the the outside more thicker than when they actually start working with the center of the face. They'll use a more like a thinner pen. That's the same thing with this character right here. There we have developing game plan and all pen. Now this is the same comic strip you're going to see but different artists uh, no actually it's him but he works different styles like in, on every every page you're going to see here is actually a different way like for example he did this one with um my old friend terry uh houston master uh of a pen inking inked his version and published a version of this page which was penciled by me though an all pen approach can be overly slick and regularly controlled terry though that the story would work better if the art was somewhat more organic and worked toward that end so you're going to see it's the same story, but different ink techniques, all brush. You see, this was done with all brush, no inking, no pens, just all brush. Now I couldn't do anything like this. I got to work at least with two pens if I were to do a comic strip. You know what I mean? But this whole segment here was done just brush. That's it. And that's, I'm pretty sure that took a long time. And then this one is pen and brush. And let me see what else this one okay we have the hair here inking textures of hair and it tells you all t you know like i said before like you know the top of the hair is a little bit lighter and then the bottom part of the hair is going to be thicker and you can see a lot of details from the from the center of the hair this is more like when gravity pulls like when the hair the balance of the hair is actually going 
really down and it's falling down like the heaviness of the hair so it's pulling the hair all the way down and of course even though it's got rhythm the hair and that's one thing that's very important the rhythm of the hair but remember that when you're doing this in ink you gotta follow the same rhythm of the hair especially with the inking and that is not easy that is pretty hard to do sometimes here here it might be a little bit simple because the hair is shorter but this would be a little bit harder to do i guess you know this is a little maybe a little bit easier but remember this guy is black hair dark hair no outline see Okay, then we have fabric when you're doing clothes on um, inking. So he's giving you an idea how to do the inking. So, you know, practice by, <clears throat> if you're going to work with ink, which I definitely need a lot of practice doing ink, um, you got to do it slowly. You got to like really, really put your mind to the inking process. And you really got to figure out where the blacks are. And like I've said before many times that try to X the parts you're going to do, like say this is black or this is dark here, you're going to put an X on all the dark areas. Kind of like visualize where all the black areas are. And do what uh, Andrew Loomis did on one of the pages that I've shown you, that he sketches out a thumbnail and he does a lot of blacks. Even, even if it's a dummy drawing, you can do that too. You can practice by making dark areas whatever and then when you do the actual drawing then you know what to do so i think that's the best way of describing it here we have the sequential storytelling how to move your story around for example she's in the hallway she's suspicious of something she's ready to open the door she opens the door and then she's frightened that's how you're doing you know when you're doing storyboarding and of course, storyboarding is used in movies, and that's how they do movies. When they do movies, they do storyboarding of, say, when they did Star Wars, they definitely did storyboarding on that. So that comic books are, uh, it's, it's all about storyboarding too, so. And here we have the close-up shots and the long shots. Let's see what else we got here, the two shots. The mob scene <coughs> and the trick shot. I don't know what they mean by the trick shot, but I got to read this page more too. So there's a couple of pages here that I haven't read that much. Paneling pages and then now, I don't know what they mean by that. Let me get some water. My voice is getting dry. Here they're explaining different types of panels that you can use when you're doing comic strips. You can actually plan it out by doing the outlines like this, you know, and then it actually changes different directions. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, and it changes. You see the panels changes. Just remember that in a comic strip is probably up to five panels or four panels at least. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever seen a comic strip that's probably six panels. I could be wrong. Oh, yeah, here's one that's six panels. But it says here, avoid stacked panels when you're doing panels like this. It says here, experiment with shapes. The shape of the panel can't hint and its content. Diagonal, speed, action. And here we have from words to pictures. And this is a step-by-step -step storytelling right here, see? Creating the scene of place. And distinguishing characters. And what I like about uh, Darjano that he's very classic art. Even though it's a little bit, you know, cartoony and comic book style, but it's very, very classic. So he does a lot of classic stuff. <clears throat> then we have getting the script. 
when you're actually reading the script and forming it into a comic strip. The thumbnail first, creating the comic book thumbnail. After that, creating the comic book, the comic page, the penciling, and then the inking. Coloring. And these are different styles of special effects and colors right here. All right, guys. So let's start um, figuring how we start with the heads. And let's uh, examine and let's analyze. And so far, I've shown you pretty much the whole book. So let's start with the eyes first. And I'm going to show you how it's done. <clears throat> and let me see. All right, so you start with, of course, when you're drawing the eyes, you're always going to have a center line. So then we're going to do a, sort of like an oval shape for the eye. And then we're going to do a line like this. And then another curved line like this. And then this, this will be the top of the eye. And then this will be the bottom of the eye. See, it's already forming into an eye. So... <coughs> Locate the iris and the pupil within this shape. Add the slight wedge-like shape to the inside corner, which is this. This is the uh, tear duct. So in order for me to do, I usually use, uh, which it doesn't say in the book, but I usually, you know, use like a block shape to do the iris of the eye. So I'm going to do the iris. And then it says fill in, fill in the pupil and add in the highlights, add the eyelids and the eyelash. So we're going to fill in the pupil. And I've shown you many times how to draw an eye, but let's do it the way the Arjano actually explains. Even though it's very similar to the stuff that I've shown you guys. Right here, we're going to do the um, eyelid. And then we'll do the eyelashes. But before we do the eyelashes, we're going to do the outlines first, uh, like this. And then over here, make a line in the bottom here. Because that's part of the flesh of the eye. Okay, always remember that's part of the flesh of the eye. Then we'll do tiny little hairs, eyelashes, not hairs, I would say eyelashes. <clears throat> and then remember that the top of the eye, you know, it's a little, it's a little thick here, but it gets more thicker in a center. All right. And there you have your eye right there. And then you're going to start shaping it just a little bit on the top. Just remember that the center is a little bit thicker and it's thicker here, but it just, you know, it's more thinner, okay? So always keep that in mind. Okay, now if you're using the eyeball, you could, you know, use that line again. Indicate the size of the eyeball. And then you start working with the shape of the eyeball. And you could do the same thing. Do the oval shape. The same thing. The oval shape and then you start shaping the eye little by little see Okay, so that's pretty much <clears throat> what he's showing us in these pages right here using the eyeball technique. So let's go with the mouth. And what I like to do, since I like to work with a three-quarter view, uh, supposedly, uh, remember, when you're doing the three-quarter view mouth, you're visualizing, here's the center of the mouth right here, which is a vertical line going down, of course. This side, you're going to see less and this side there's more um outline of the mouth actually is more wide over here and shorter over here just remember that this side 
is wider and this one is shorter. So what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, the indication of how the mouth is. We'll start with the center first. You know, you go always start the top here first and then work with the center. I think it's better to start the top and then the center. But be careful with the proportions. Here's the bottom lip right here. Now to figure out a three quarter view lip, I'm gonna visualize a tapered line here. Okay. And this will be the outline of the side of the lip right here. And this will be the, um, the other side of the lip right here. Then this is the uh, bottom part of the lip. And then I'm gonna actually widen this, you know, stretch it out a little bit. And that would be <coughs> excuse me. That would be the end of the lip on this side. So it's a three-quarter view lip. Just remember that you have to, you know, taper this in, this part. And then right here would be the side of the face. the nose and the corner of the nose all right so it works now let's try the uh, profile lip we're gonna first do like we usually do the front of the lip we'll do the line for the lip and now um, we're gonna do the sort of like a, a V shape Okay, that'll be the three, not the three quarter view, sorry, the, the profile lip. Always remember that the top lip comes further out and the bottom lip is actually in more. So we're going to do the outside of the lip over here, which comes out a little bit further out. And this one is a little bit in, see? Hopefully you guys can see this. Yeah, okay, good. I got to go back, look on the camera again to see if you guys can see this. And this will be the top of the lip, which is actually the filter that actually bends in the filter underneath the nostril. And then the chin. Remember when you're doing the chin, you don't want to bring it out too much. You want to make it nice and even a little bit inward and then you have your chin right there okay so that's more like a woman's lip remember a woman's lip is a little bit different from a man's lip this will be the outside of the nose and the tip of the nose right there okay so now let's draw um this lip right here sort of like you're looking upward and the way i would probably do this um i would do pretty much like i've shown you the other day that i would curve the line upward like this and then of course <clears throat> this will be the bottom part of the lip and the center of the lip all the way like this and then I'll start doing the outline of the lip. Like that. And here's the filter. In the corner of the lip. <laughs> so you could do the same process when you're doing the lip, when it's when the mouth is opening, of course. Remember, when you're doing the mouth opening, it's gonna actually change. The whole form is gonna change. So you're gonna have to make the top of the mouth open wide, and then the bottom part of the mouth open wide. And it's, it's gonna give your face, you know, expression, especially when you're drawing faces with expressions. You're gonna make the mouth open. So let's start doing this one. And it's sort of like a V shape. If you look at this, it's like a V shape. And of course that V shape is gonna be stretched. Okay, so we're gonna do that now. Let me see, we'll do it right here. We're gonna use this for reference, of course, because I definitely need a lot of practice with open mouths. 
So we're going to do an open mouth and we're going to do a, like a, not a V shape like this, but a V shape that's kind of wide open. All right. And then we'll start doing the lip over here, the bottom lip here. And then here's the top of the lip. And remember the top of the mouth comes out further out, especially with the lip. All right. So the teeth, are going to be the bottom part of where the the lip is right here and and then we'll do the other set of teeth on the bottom part of the, the mouth right there so so far i've got the the mouth opening and then i got the dimple over here and let me erase this because that's gonna actually throw me off and it looks like there's a mosquito that actually dropped a visit on me it's bothering the hell out of me it's biting me worth when I have no shirt because I have no shirt I hate mosquitoes yeah they come in my room like hey man I'm here so what you gonna do about it and it's like wow now we could do also a hint of the other side of the teeth, which is sort of like darker on the other side. Okay. So this right here is pretty much what you see over here. So let's make the teeth like he's grinding with anger or something. So we're going to do that. And let's get another page. Let's do it in the back, I guess. Let's we'll do it right here. So we're going to do that. <clears throat> His mouth. His teeth is going to be sort of like, you know, he's mad. And this is the bottom part of his lip here. And then here's the mouth. And then the teeth is sort of like, Ryan, you know, a little bit close to each other, kind of. Maybe I should have made this a little bit inward. Yeah, that's what I should have done. Okay, I got it now. This was pretty hard to do. It wasn't easy, but it's it's an idea. So, I mean, you could practice by, um, if you guys get the book, I really recommend you guys get the book. That way you can understand this a little bit more better. So I'm giving you an idea, but then again, I might do a blooper. You know what I mean? So, <clears throat> now let's do um, this mouth right here. It's sort of like wide open. And let's see if we can do this one. So in order to get that pose, um, I'm going to visualize the open part of the mouth and then the bottom part of the mouth. And this will be the bottom part of the lip here. And this will be the teeth. And so I'm going to do like an outline for the teeth. Nothing big. Just a, a hint of a teeth. Right here is the tongue. And this is the bottom of the teeth right here. Then the lips on top of the outline of the mouth right here. Okay. So I already got the, you know, the outline of the lips in the bottom right here. And then I got the chin right here. So, so far it's looking like an open mouth. Not what I expected, but I mean, this is a very complicating pose to do. It's not so easy. And even though I know how to draw faces, I mean, these are one of the things I definitely need a lot of practice, you know, to draw the um, expressions on mouths and expressions, how the face works, uh, especially when they're, in, you know, doing expressions like this. Okay. And then right here, I'm going to start, you know, make it more, give it blacks, add some blacks, because there's a lot of cast shadow, especially inside the mouth. There's a lot of dark areas.
Okay, so that's more like an open mouth right there, see? I'll do the outline of the lip, and there we go. All right, so I'm not going to do the rest of the lips. Um, I might do this one, which is sort of like a smile, but you can see the teeth. So in order for me to do something like that, um, I'm probably going to have to do the shape of the open part of the mouth like that and then the outline of the lips here and remember work work you know slowly and lightly that way you know you don't do so many mistakes then the teeth comes in and there's like a little dark area in the corners of the teeth right here not that much though just a little so i can start working with the the top of the lip the shape of the lip right there and then this will be the front part of the teeth right here I'm gonna do the shape of the teeth right here and <clears throat> now I could actually uh, do a little space here like make it darker over here and then bring the lip a little bit higher now see And this is the dimple part. So that's pretty much what you see over here. Now remember that when you're doing the teeth, always remember that you don't want to add too much detail on the teeth. So you're doing sort of like a hint of the gums on the top, like this, and a hint of the outline of the teeth. Because in comics is done this way they don't exaggerate too much you know they don't add too much lines on the teeth just a hint on the top the gums and the, oh, the mosquitoes bothering me the you know the bottom of the teeth here All right, so we got that done. So let's go on with the nose now. And I've shown you many times, many times in so many tutorials I've done, that the nose is sort of like a triangle shape or a pyramid shape. And then it's got different parts. Three, the nose got planes. And when you're doing the planes, you're shaping the planes into more like a three-dimensional form nose. So I'm going to do this one a little bit bigger so you can understand it. Um... I'm going to actually throw this away. I don't need this anymore. And let's work with the nose now. So in order to get that shape of the nose, I'm going to do sort of like a, an image of a triangle shape. And then the bottom part, kind of like a V shape, a stretch V shape. And then uh, the planes, I'm going to start doing the planes. This will be the top plane of the nose. And this is the bottom part of the nose right here. And then we'll do more. We're, we're going we're gonna to shape the outline of the nose a little better. Okay. So it will look pretty much like the picture that we just saw right now. So we have A and we have B and we have C and we have D. All right. So I'm not going to worry about the order of the planes, because if I want, I can, you know, start with the center first or the corners of the nose. It's whatever you remember. I've shown you many times that when you're doing the nose, you can start the nostrils first or you could do the corner of the nose. This and that. So I would actually start from the bottom first. And then I go up and I work my way doing the nostrils. Here's the nostril over here. And this will be the top of the center of the nose, of course. And this will be the center of the nose. And this will be the corner of the nose. So already, I'm working with the, the bottom and the side of the nose and the center of the nose already, see? And 
And right here, I can actually do the bridge of the nose if I want, right there. Now, I've shown you many times that you can do noses like this. You can actually do an upside down T like that. Yeah, like, yeah, an upside, yeah, actually an upside down cross like that. And then do the V shape here. And then do the form of a triangle on top. And sort of like a pyramid shape. And then right here would be the center of the nose. And remember that when you're looking at a nose, like a face is looking towards you, you're going to notice that the nose, the plane of the nose, is sort of like tapering out a little bit. So it's something like this, okay? So it's never straight like this. It's sort of like coming out like this, you know, the center. I'm talking about the center of the nose. So we're going to taper a little bit outward to just to get that general shape of the nose. And then... Then, you know, in, in the in the center of the nose, sort of like a little ball shape. Here's the bottom part of the nose. And then this is the nostrils. The nostrils over here. And then we'll do the corner of the nose right there. And then here's the bridge of the nose right there. Okay. So it's pretty much like what you see over here. It's kind of the same thing, a little bit different. So let's work with the uh, the profile nose. And, and the profile nose is pretty easy. But remember, when you're doing a whole face, a profile, you got to know the proportions and you got to know the right, correct way with the length of the nose, especially the bottom of the nose and everything. So we're just going to do a regular nose, but actually it's actually the um the profile of the nose so right here is going to be the nostril then right here is going to be the corner of the nose the top here and then the bottom of where the nostril is is sort of like an outline all right there's an outline of the bottom of the nose this is the front of the nose right here and it goes up tapers up a little bit from the bridge of the nose right there. <coughs> Excuse me. And then if you're going to do the lips, just remember that you're measuring from the nostril all the way down, and then you bring out the lips right here. Remember right here. Okay. And if you were to do a whole face, imagine if you're doing a whole face, here's the outline for the nose, the mouth, the lip, here's the chin. Got to remember, you have to follow the proportions. If you don't follow the proportions, then your nose is going to come out really bad. Your whole profile is going to come out really bad. And then you start working with the outline from the, the eye socket, from the bridge of the nose, bring it out, the tip of the nose, the corner of the nose the outline of the mouth right here and right here would be the bottom part of the lip and then we have the chin right there okay and everything takes practice you you know you got to keep practicing until you get it right okay remember you have to draw 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 every day and practice every day that's how you become an artist if you stop a month, you're going to forget things. Trust me, it happened to me. Sometimes I stop drawing for a month. I might be doing something else, working on another project or something. Um, I remember when I used to play the guitar. Well, right now I can't play the guitar because of my freak accident of my finger. But I used to stop drawing for like a month or two months. And then I got with the guitar. And then I lost my way in drawing again. So that's why you have to you know, keep practicing every day. You got to keep drawing every day, every day until you get really good, okay? So now we can start working with the heads now. So let's look at this. Uh, it says here, draw the circle and then add the jaw at the bottom, forming an egg shape. So that's what we're doing. Pretty much like I've shown you in the other video before this one. You know, it's like you're doing an egg shape and then you're doing the grid lines and then you're forming the eyes. You know, this and that, just like you see over here. And we're going to work with this right now.
Okay, so we need to work with another page, of course. So, okay, I don't know if I can bend this book. The thing is, if I bend this book too much, it'll probably rip up. So, so I'm just going to hold it like this and just look at it. And since I already know what to do when it comes to heads, so I could actually visualize this in my head. So I'm not going to do it exactly like he did. You know, I usually start a circle, then a vertical line, and then I do the shape of the bottom. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to do the shape. Sort of like an egg shape. And this is going to remind you of the one I did before this video. <coughs> the same um, segments. And if we look at this, pretty much like the video I showed you. Um, here we have the eyes and we have the nose. And remember, the nose is underneath where the circle is. And then the mouth. And it's, it's like the Loomis method, but the Loomis method, the nose is a little bit higher than the eyes are a little bit higher than, you know, uh, pretty much like I've shown you the video before this one. So, yeah, it's the same segments. So the nose is going to be right here. And then the mouth is going to be right here. And then the chin is going to be right here. And then I'm going to start shaping this a little bit more. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now the eyes will be around here. This time, the eyes are not going to be underneath the line like I did at the other video because I'm actually doing the line a little bit lower. And that right here will be the eyes on top of the line, see? Now I'm going to measure three eyes wide, three eyes length, to set my eyes on the face, right? Then the ears will be around here. Then the other ear will be around here. Then we have the eyebrow line right here. It's already beginning to look like a face, even though it's not, there's no details at it, but it's a face. There's a, there's a plan of a face right there. We're planning out the face. That's what it's all about. Okay, so uh, then right here would be the length of the mouth or the center of the where the iris is going to go. Uh, that's pretty much what we're doing over here. And uh, now we could actually start, you know, grinding in, you know, shaping the face. I'm going to start working with the shape of the eyes first. The bridge of the nose. The bottom of the nose. The mouth. The bottom part. The eyebrows. And let me see what else he did here. Because his face looks a little bit different. So we could start, you know, you can tell the proportions here. He didn't do it correctly done over here. So let's turn the other page to see if there's a better demonstration here. <clears throat> of the front view. And that mosquito biting me. Oh my lord, this is crazy. Okay. All right, to figure this out, I'm going to add the planes better. Here's the temple lines. That's what I'm going to do. See? If you want to figure out the shape of the face, use the planes. It's very helpful. You could do this, or you could do it this way. This or like this. 
and right here will be the hairline. I asked um, my friend Romero from Facebook uh, if he can do a, like maybe a tutorial um, since that was one of his good friends, Dick Giordano. If he can do something, you know, to show us how he did this book. He said he's going to try. Let's see. Hopefully. So I'm doing my best. <clears throat> I'm giving you an idea <coughs> how I do it. Um, but maybe Romero could probably do it better than I could. Um, so far I have the idea of it. Now, then again, you know, the only one that knows, you know, that actually did this technique is, you know, Dick Giordano himself, you know, so even though we're using his technique and we're learning from his book, we have to respect, uh, pretty much if, you know, figuring how he did it how he actually started working with the, the method and stuff. But I guess he did the book. When he did the book, I guess he's giving a, you know, giving us an option that pretty much like Loomis, that Loomis gives us the formula, but with the formula, we figure out how things are done with the formula. Okay, so that's what pretty much what Dick Giordano would do. Okay, so that's pretty much... So far, I got the idea. I had to use something different, of course, because it, the thing is, this one doesn't show you any um, the planes. And I really do think that the planes really help the face a lot. It actually gives you more uh, a better view how to draw the face in better shape. Unfortunately, he didn't do it over here. I think that's why his face didn't come out that good, especially here. It just the eyes are too big. Um, I think he did this too fast. You know, I respect him a lot, but I think the proportions on the face did not come out so good here. I, I don't know. Um, then again, it's, it's, you know, cartoony, like, you know what I mean? Um, if you want to do something more realistic, of course, you got to figure it out yourself. Um, just like I did right now with this demonstration. All right. So let's, um, let's look at the profile and, uh, he did the same process, a circle the jaw shape, and then he added the, the grid lines. After the grid lines, he starts adding the features for the eyes, the nose, the mouth, all the works. And then he did the hair. Uh, notice that there's layers, you see, there's layers, layers and rhythm for the hair. And then he shades in the hair. So let's see if we can do this one. <coughs> <clears throat> My God, this cough doesn't go away. It's terrible. Let me put some bigs on my chest. Maybe that might help. <clears throat> First things first, we're going to start the circle first. That'll be for the cranium and the shape of the head. Then we'll do the jaw shape. Now, if I want, I can do this like that and then do the jaw shape. That helps out. The eye line, and this is not the Loomis method, so remember the eye line is going to be a little bit lower. So <clears throat> first, 
I will indicate the eye line around here, the nose line around here, and then the chin line here. So I'm already seeing three parts of the face. Right there. Okay, so now um, on this line, I'm going to do a V shape for the eye. A hint of the eyebrow. And simply just bring out the nose. Corner of the nose. And then the mouth. And then the chin. And then the neck. And then I got the ears. Right here. So it's pretty much what I'm doing here, I'm seeing here, except when I did this process here, I did sort of like a, an egg shape form in order to get that shape of the jaw. Again, you could do like the Loomis. The Loomis would actually do a circle, a line for the front of the face, and then do the jaw. You can do it that way if you want. Um... I think it works that way. You could do it this way. Like that. And then right here would be the chin. And then right here would be the jaw right there. So you could do it that way. It's sort of like if you were doing an L but backwards. Okay, so let's finish this guy up. You got the ears. And... Uh, we're going to do this one, a woman. So I know that the woman's nose is a little bit tipped up. And I'm going to do her mouth. And the V-shape for her, the form of her mouth, of course. The chin. Her lips. Okay. The forehead, make sure I draw those eyes correctly, especially the eyelashes and fix the eyebrows a bit. Always remember that the, the jaw, the back of the jaw, especially the jaw of a woman, is a little bit curvy. It's never too straight. The man's jaw is more stronger and more, it's got more shape. A woman's more curved. So, so you got to remember that a woman's face is different. So now let's add the hair. So I'm going to do, uh, let me see something. First, let me do the top here. And, and then the other half is coming this way. So she's got pretty thick hair. But this is a sort of like a comic book face. So when, when you're doing comic books, it's sort of like exaggerated. I never worked with this technique because I'm so used to using the Loomis method, you know. Um, but it's always good to challenge yourself. Okay. So we have an idea so far. How her face is going to work. And this will be 
the inside roots of her hair right here. And let's start working with uh, the layers of her hair. So she's got a lot of, you know, a lot of layers. It's sort of like some of them are really close to each other and some of them are a little like far apart from each other. <coughs> so we want to make sure that we have the correct proportions of the the rhythm of the hair, of course. I don't know if I said that right, but anyway. It's there. So it's, com it's coming out pretty good. It's not that bad. And this part of this side of the hair is a little bit darker, of course. So now I could, you know, do pretty much what he does. He sort of like shades in the hair. But I'm not going to do too much details on this because I'm just giving you an idea how he did this over here. So, all right, so let's go on with the next page and let's do the three-quarter view. The three-quarter view is almost like the Loomis method that you see over here. Let's draw the circle, add a jaw, line, appropriate for this three-quarter view, front view. Bisect this form both horizontally and vertically. The vertical line determines the view of the head at a plane, which is this right here, which it says here, A, a plane, that forms the dividing point between the front and the side of the head. Okay. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do it the way he did it, and then I'm going to show you another way how to do this because I think it's important that I show you both ways. This will be part of the side of the face, the jaw, and then here's the back of the jaw here. Okay. So this will be the eye line is gonna go further down and this will be the center of the face. And then this is the plane that he was talking about. Pretty much like I did on my uh, other segment. Now you can do this pretty much like I did on the other video that you just, you know, indicate, you know, the nose line and the chin line and maybe it's more easier to do. But You could also do it this way. Let's try another approach. Hold on. Let's um, visualize this. Since we're not using the Loomis method on this, we can do it this way. We can do the circle, right? And then we visualize. And I think that's what he did. Yeah. He did a, a line first. It shows you right here. There's like two lines here, you see? So he's not really, you know, he's just giving you the idea of the ball and the jaw, but actually it's supposed to be this way. You do the vertical line to do the, do the shape of the jaw. So, yeah. Then this will be the bottom part of the jaw. So, yeah, I think this is the way you're supposed to do it this way. And then we'll do the uh, the jaw here. And then, yeah, now it's well proportioned. So the eye line should be around here. 
Okay, so I think it's working now. So um, we're going to visualize where the plane of the side of the face is going to be at. And then um, this is where he does the eye right here. And then the other eye a little closer to the vertical line because it's a three quarter view. And then it's gonna be another eye shape here. So um, the nose would be around here or a little bit lower. So we have a hint of the nose and a hint of the mouth right here. So notice, if you look at this, if you study this, he adds planes for the side of the head, sort of like uh, Finch would do. So if you want, once you have this done right here, and there goes that mosquito again, you can actually start working <clears throat> with the shape of the planes like this. Pretty much like David Finch, like that, like that, and uh, we have the bridge of the nose there. We got to be careful with the proportions of the nose. We got to follow up where the it leads to the eye, of course. And here's the uh, nostrils tip of the nose, the mouth. Okay, so, so far it's coming out pretty good. It takes a lot of work though. Um, well, I wouldn't say a lot of work. It just takes a lot of concentrating. You have to concentrate a lot for this. So I got my face done. All I got to do is worry about the shape of the face, which is the contour, the side of the face. Like that. Sort of like a lump over here. And a lump for the chin right here. And this will be the top. And of course the hair line here. The planes. The hairline. Then the ears will be, be yeah, around here. Do a circle for the ears just to get it out of the way. Outline. And remember what I said. If you have to add more flesh in back of the head, then do it. And you're going to have to because that's going to be the outline of the hair also. So, so far, it's coming out looking a little bit like, uh, kind of like this a little bit. Let me um, show you right here. So, let's go back. And let's finish this off just a little bit. We'll just do a little bit of some details. I don't promise you that I'm going to do a lot of details, but... I'm just giving you an idea how Diorgiano would do this. Okay. So that's your average, you know, comic book face. Um, I'll do a little bit more stuff here. I'll do some hair over here. Right here. Then the back of the neck. to the neck all right so we got that done all right so this is the um the three-quarter view rear view 
And yes, this is important to learn. Now, <clears throat> the face is going to be turned. You're only going to see like the ear and the back of the head. And you're just going to see like maybe some portion of the side view right here. So let's see if we can figure this one out. So let's see. We'll start with a regular circle. And then we'll indicate the shape of the front of the face right here. But the ear line, now notice this is going to be the ear line. So it's going to be a little closer to the end of the circle. It's not going to be in the center like a regular profile. It's going to be a little bit towards the front. So we want to capture that. So what do we do? We'll make the line right here all the way down like this. This will be the um, the eye line right here. And let's do a line right here for the jaw, even though that's not the correct proportion, but we're going to fix it later on. So in order to get this, what I'm going to do, people, is I am going to do the planes first. And right here would be the eye. And then the nose is going to be a little bit closer. <clears throat> so I got to be careful with this because it's not going to be easy. And then the jaw is going to be right here. And of course, uh, I got to be careful with this. It's not going to be easy. Wow. Hold on. The mouth. It's not going to show that much. It's just a hint of the mouth. That's it. Because this is sort of like a, a three quarter view, but looking from the back side. So the ear is going to look more bigger over here. And you're going to see more um, back of the head. When you're doing this this type of pose right here so what i should have done first maybe i should have done the eye first and then do the planes but i got the idea already you know even though yeah i should have done the eye first here at the edge of the circle at the end of the circle and then do the planes afterwards i think that would have been better but i have it, it's it's there man it's there trust me um The problem is, if you look at this, this connects, you see? This actually connects from the eye all the way down to the cheek line. So I think that's why it looks more like a three-quarter a three quarter view backside. Because he connected from the bottom of the eye all the way to the cheek line. And of course, this is the nose. The corner of the nose is right here. And we're not going to bring that in too further in because of course we're we're seeing more of this side of the head <clears throat> and the mouth is going to seem to be smaller okay so we're going to do the bottom part of his jaw is going to show more and the artery is going to be a little further back you see And then we'll have the earlobe right here, a little bit closer. The top of the ears right here. Notice that the ear is going to be bigger than this part, the front of the face, of course. And then you're going to see the eyebrow is going to be on this side, a bit closer to the plane of the face. Yeah, I think it's, it's coming out better now. So, this will be the top of the hair, of course. All right, yeah. Um, it came out pretty good. Now, like I said, this takes a lot of concentration because this is a different pose. 
it's a different angle of the face. <clears throat> Most people can't draw this type of angle because this is very difficult because you're looking more um, of the backside of the head and you're going to see less of the face. It's not like the three-quarter view. The three-quarter view is a little bit different. You like the front part of the three-quarter view. And this is the rear part of the three-quarter view. All righty. Let's go on. Bird's eye view. So let's practice the bird's eye view, this technique. See, let's see how he did this one. And let's study this. Uh, pretty much like I've shown you before, that you curve the lines of the features, you see, looking down. Here's the distance from the eye level to the chin level. And here's the nose line. And here's the mouth line. And of course, the bottom of the face is going to seem a little bit smaller. And then the top of the head is going to be wider because the face is actually looking downward. So let's do that one. <coughs> let's do that one and see um, if we can actually tackle this one. I'm going to do this one a little bit bigger, of course, because yeah, this is going to take a lot to figure out. So I'm going to do it bigger. All right, so I'm going to see the shape of the face from the tip of the circle here, the bottom part of the circle. Right here would be the chin, right? Then, of course, this is going to be the eye line right here, I think. Yeah, this will be the eye line here. Then the nose will be here. And then the mouth will be a little bit closer to where the nose line is. And then uh, we do sort of like an egg shape. So that's what we're going to do, an egg shape, a form of an egg shape. Okay, so this is not going to be easy. So the eyes are, we'll do the planes of the eyes. And then we got the nose, but the nose is going to point out more further out because it's, we're looking down at the nose now, so... And then the mouth is right around here. And then the bottom part of the mouth, the lip. And then the, the chin right there. So let's see if this works. I mean, I could always use another method for this, of course, you know. Then the jaw, I'm going to bring it up here. And then bring it up here. And that would be my jaw. Now, I don't know if this is going to work. But anyway, it's always good to challenge yourself. The ears are going to be a little bit higher, of course. Like right underneath where the eye is around there. And then this will be the hairline here, which is... Yeah, I don't... I, I think this one is like really hard to figure out. I should have done this a different way but it's always good to try the challenge to see if it works okay All right, it's, it's not bad. It just takes a lot of practice because I'm so used to using other techniques for this. Okay, so um, we can try this again <clears throat> by doing it this way. This will be the eye line here, nose, mouth, and chin. So we could try it that way also. And then we can make the jaw. Well, let's see the eyes are over here. Yeah, that that that's a very hard task to do. For some reason or something, I'm effing up with this. 
Um, let me see. Hold on, some. Let me let me check out the oval method to see. I can do this in a different way because I know I could do this in a different way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do the eyes first, right? Then the nose, then the mouth a little bit closer to the nose because we're looking down and then the chin. See, this is more better now. This actually works. And then I could do the shape of the face with no problem at all. The temple. The cheek lines. Let's do the nose first. Then the ears a little bit higher, of course. And then we could do the shape of the hair. Okay, so see this works better because I just simply use the oval shape, right? Okay, so let's do this angle here. This is sort of like, uh, like, like the face, but you can see half of the jaw on the bottom. So let's see if we can do this. You can tell the direction of the face is a little different. So, all right, so let's see. <clears throat> Drink some water. All right. All right, we're gonna do this angle, see if it works. So let's challenge ourselves if we can do this. <clears throat> so we're looking upward now on a side view. Sort of like a three quarter view, but we're looking upward. Okay, so. This doesn't really show you that much, but we have an idea what to do. The nose, we're gonna see the bottom of the nose, that's for sure. The mouth. And of course the eyes are going to be in a different direction. <clears throat> Let's see if we get this. We'll get this. So always remember that when you're doing this angle, you have to do the, the lines curving upward. All right, so let's try this one out. <clears throat> and while we're at it, we can finish this guy a little bit. Right there. All right, so let's do this one right here. So, let me see. <coughs> All right, since he's looking up, I got to change the direction of the eyes. A 
the mouth. And the nose is sort of pointing up. This will be the bottom of the chin. Then we have the eyes. to change it a little bit. And then the top of the head is a bit, you don't see too much on the top because, of course, the face is looking up and you're going to see more on this side, on the bottom part, than in the top because it's sort of like perspective and also foreshortening. <clears throat> And then the ears kind of fall down a little bit downward. Remember, when the face is looking up, the ears are going to actually fall down more closer to the where the mouth is. And a little bit lower from where the eyes are. Okay, so that's uh, another way of doing the uh, upward look and stuff. All right, let's keep going on. Let's, um, let's try uh, this form. See how we can do with this one. <coughs> All right, so this is like a three-quarter view, so let's uh, practice this one. <clears throat> This will be the jaw. And right here be the side plane of the head. So I can do the nose. And do a hint of the eyes. Like that. And then the mouth. Like that. Let's try to do this technique using, and we're going to mix it with uh, David Finch's method. Let's see how that works. It's always good to try something new. Yeah. All right, so this will be here.
So that would be more like the David Finch method. And of course the eye, we'll start the eye here, and then the other eye here. Then the mouth will be right here. So that would be more like the David Finch technique and drawing the uh, three-quarter view. <clears throat> Here's another one right here that it's almost similar to David Finch a little bit. Okay, so uh, let's see if we can do this one. And this one kind of reminds me of a box shape. So, just like David Finch would do, something like that it would be the eye line, and we could start the nose first, and right here would be where the eye is going to be at. So this actually works out pretty well. And then we got the ears. <clears throat> contour of the face. All right, so <clears throat> we have an idea how that's done. Okay, so we can try this one without the planes. Notice that he uses the plane over here, and then he doesn't use the plane on this side of the head. So let's try doing this one on this side right here. Let me see. Start with a regular circle. This will be the eye line. And 
Right here would be the ears. And this will be the plane on this side of the face right here. And the bottom of the eye right here. Then the mouth. And the cheek lines. Finish this part of the eye right here. Side of the eye right here. And the cheek lines on this side. He's got heavy eyebrows. Also on this side, he's got heavy eyebrows also. Big eyebrows. Beard. bottom of the hair. So it's a little bit like this, but it's not that much. I guess mine looks a little bit younger, but I gotta make him look really old. So I'm gonna do a lot of cast shadow. This side will get darker. Here it comes out. There's a lot of rhythm on this side of his hair. Well, this side of the face, of course. <clears throat> I'm just gotta erase some of these construction lines I don't need. Here 
erase this part right here and erase this. Let's make this a little bit dramatic. Like add, you know, some shading around the head. dark all right so it looks a little bit like it but not that much let's try it now let's do the figure drawing and uh, like I've shown you before, this is sort of like the proportions of the figure. And then we got options over here, different options, how to draw the figure, constructing the figure. Did you ever draw one figure beautifully, then miss the mark entirely on the next one you drew? Chances are both were accidents and results of drawing a figure without first constructing it. I cannot stress enough the importance of developing the basic figure construction process that allows you to attain consistency. Consistency, sorry. Okay, so we have here block shapes. And notice that the block shapes are transformed and from the block shapes, he starts fleshing it out. So let's do it this way to see how it works. So we need another page. Let's start this one. Okay, let's do it with the block shapes. See how that works. Well, I wouldn't say it would be something like block shapes, but it's not exactly, it's like in a form of block shapes. This here is the balance line. And then all around it is the core of the body. So that's what he did over here, see? Let's draw her arm. And the head shape. Always remember the center line and the balance line. And I've shown you guys uh, many times that the balance line is very important. Now we can continue in doing the breast. I think I did the head too, too low. 
it's just seems like the body is too big bigger than the head so I got to be careful when I do the um the head shape I think that's better now So now I could give her <clears throat> a little bit more of a shape. More curve. So that's pretty much what you see over here. Okay, so let's try a different segment like this one right here. <clears throat> so I'm going to actually spot out the balance line first. Now I can start working with uh, the shape of the body. And this kind of reminds me of something that I observed on YouTube, which I'm going to show you right now. Pretty much. Something like this. But it's in pencil. I don't know if you can see that. Which. Actually something like this, which I'm going to show you right now. Like this. Balance line and the shape. The balance line is going to actually help you out. Just remember the balance line. Once you have that, you can actually see the parts of the body. <coughs> Here's the hip area right here. Goes in the chest rib cage. And we have her body done. And I think I have, which we're going to do this in another video of figure drawing. But that's pretty much how 
Giordano does his figures. And I think this is where um, Romero actually got the idea of using the balance line with the box shapes. Okay, so let's continue. Here's the hands. And let me give you an idea. I'll save this for later. Start out with the center, which is this whole part of the hands right here. And then we're going to scribble in the forms. Now we can do the outline of the thumb. The middle finger. Sort of like three shapes. Over here also, three shapes. So what you're doing is you're forming it into the scribbling and then you're forming the outline of the hand. And then we have the hands right there, see? <clears throat> the hands are not easy to do. So let's do a different pose. So what I'm doing here is more like scribbling the shape of each finger. And then what I'm doing afterwards is I'm going to start doing the form of the cylinder shapes. Let me get something more easier to do. Hold on. Okay, that's a hand. Here's the palm of the hand. <clears throat> and I'm just going to scribble in the shape of the fingers. This finger is a little longer, the middle finger is always longer. Here's the other, the arm right here. <coughs> 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 Now we can do the uh, cylinder shapes. 
Notice I'm starting from the bottom and then in the center and then I do sort of like a bullet shape. And hands are not easy to do, it takes a lot. to do it's not easy it's a real mission to do hands <laughs> you always got to remember the shape of the contour of the fingers that's one thing this one is a little bit straight and inward is a little bit curvy. Straight and curvy. So there you go. Practice by looking at photos of hands on Google. You can always Google images of hands or you can practice with your own hand. <clears throat> and that's how you get really good with the hands. All right, let's work on feet now. And uh, you can see he starts off with, I would say, he, I think he started with the base of the foot first. And then he started doing the shape. Now, the way I would do this, it would, it would be something like this. Um, I'll start with the base of the foot. And then start working with this shape here. And then this shape here. But I got to remember this line here, like that. <laughs> And then this will be where the heel will be, of course. And then right there, so little by little, I have my foot <clears throat> done, little by little. So I can add the toes just by doing like simple oval shapes for the toes. And if I were to do shoes, of course, all I have to do is do an outline for the shoes. You know, it's like I'm doing an outline for the shoes. So let's do this on women's feet. This will be a woman's foot, especially when they're on high heels. You gotta be careful with this pose, it's not easy. <clears throat> and the high heels. Like that. Like that. <laughs> and we got the, the form of the outline of the foot. Right here, if you notice, the front view is sort of like a triangle shape, kind of. So you can do a triangle shape for the front of the nose, and a, a sort of like a, a V shape for the bottom of the foot. This will be the thumb. And the heel will be in the back here. Okay, so we got an idea how that's done. So 
This is another cool technique right here. I'll show you how this is done. We'll simply do the uh, bottom part of the foot. Something like that. Okay, so <clears throat> once we have that, we'll do the shape underneath the, it's like, it's like the muscle part of the bottom of the foot. And then the front part, right here and right here. That will be the front of the foot. to another foot for a woman. And that would be the high heel. Mm -hmm. We'll give her some shape. And back of the high heel, of course. Alrighty. Okay, so we got more poses here. Running, jumping. <clears throat> Punching. Let me see what else we got here. So let's try this one that he said that a friend introduced him to this technique here. And we're probably going to use... A uh, different page for this one. And so we'll do the center, the gesture center, the balance line, this one for the shoulder, and this one for the hip area, joints. Excuse me. So I'm going to do a different pose here. And the head. So notice that you can see the outline that he does for the shape of the body. And instead of using cylinder shapes, what he does is the outline. That little by little, your body starts taking form. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to do this, actually no, you know what, I'll just keep, let me see. You could scribble in <clears throat> the form of the body if you want, or just do, you know, you scribble and do the outline at the same time. That's the way I would probably do this. Sort of like if you were seeing the body in your mind. You're doing you're seeing the shape form. 
by using this process. This will be the bottom of the crotch area right here. is it right here, the V-shape for the crotch area. So let's try this one again. Try a different pose. Let's keep going. Let's see if we can do a female now. This is another great way of doing foreshortening and perspective on a figure, of course. Um. 
Feinstein. Try this another way. Collins line. What I'm doing here is what you see over here. See the balance line here, the gesture line. And the same thing over here. something else here, let me see. You can see the uh, gesture line right here and the form of the core of the body and it follows through by adding the limbs <clears throat> of the legs and the, and the arms at the same time. All right, guys, I already showed you pretty much the rest of this book. And uh, what we, we were doing right now, we were just practicing the techniques. So hopefully, you guys, that uh, you practice these techniques. These are really good when you're drawing the figure, drawing and stuff. And it looks like I'm, my voice is running because uh, since I have a bad cold or something, it's like I'm losing my voice. It's getting worse. So I'm going to see if I can drink some tea, and then I'll do another tutorial after this. Thank you for watching.